Friedman's collection of criminous fiction must hold interest to a devotee such as yourself. I'm sure it would, were I not colder than a lonely fragment of pack ice. Currently, I can only think of all that paper as combustible fuel. Observations, Doctor? The temperature here is positively glacial. If you are insensible to it, you must count Laplanders among your ancestors.
It's time we made a move, Watson. Carry on, Holmes. I'll follow your lead. Feel like being taught your business, Augie? You can always try. Contrary to the adage, Augie, the hand is not always quicker than the eye. Yours is prosecutably slower. Have a heart. Keep it to yourself. Here's another. Two hard Irish lads was in the city, both of them familiar with the niceties of Jellignite and mean enough to use it. Trashing a fancy English club might just suit their fancy. Names? Whereabouts? No names. Suppose I tell the police that this game has never been on the square and that you've nicked them all. No need to get violent. I heard those boyos was looking for a party name of uh, Boyd something. A coal miner I heard. That's all I got, I swear. That may be what the police call a lead. I have to be somewhat more discriminating. Do you want to know the secret to all your success? Only slightly less than the Ripper's real name. Might I see Lestrade on the strength of it? The door is yours. Once inside, you're on your own hook. Fine. After Augie manipulates the cards, tell him to move away from the table. Say that if your card is not one of those face down, he's in for a stay at Pentonville. I guarantee you'll start to recoup some of your losses. He's been bombing a card, then. Some secrets are just too tawdry to tell, Constable.
Sergeant, might I have a word with Inspector Lestrade? You might, Mr. Holmes, if he were free, but as you see, he's not. Dissipating his meagre talents on trivialities, no doubt. You'd know best. If you wish to wait, you may take a seat. Sergeant, has the elderly female party become a permanent fixture? You might say, Mr. Holmes, she used to char here. Now she thinks we're guests in her parlour. Haven't the heart to disabuse her. You appear discomforted, Watson. Is there a problem? Do not concern yourself, Holmes. The draught is wreaking havoc on my sinuses. Simply makes me feel more thick-headed than usual. Police bureaucracy is perfectly suited for certain types of work. What types are those, Holmes? The tedious, the repetitive, the fatuous, the unimaginative, and the squalid. As that covers most criminal activity, it's a wonder you stay busy. Drop the sarcasm, Doctor. I'm determined to be angry with the police. If I am unreasonable, I expect you to humor me.
When might Lestrade be available, Sergeant? I couldn't say, sir. She's been burning his ear for a longer spell and shows no sign of weakening. I got tongue lashed for interrupting. What's her problem? Claims her brother's being wrongfully detained. Flapdoodle, of course. But the inspector's going the extra mile. There have been allegations of high-handedness. You may see Gregson looking over his shoulder if you take my meaning. May a patient's maladies be diagnosed from their ravings? A specialist might be able to. I'll wager alcohol plays a part in this episode. Is it current drink, a history of abuse, or a seizure? Hmm, it's a fair question. Note the particularity of his tics and gyrations. Hmm, they are suggestive. And the alterations of his complexion. An even better observation. I have been as previous as the police. The man is ill, some form of epilepsy, perhaps. Sergeant, why is that man being held in the lockup? Nutty as the proverbial fruitcake, as you can hear. He's waiting for a lift to St. Mary's. What is the delay? That woman claims he's not bonkers. She says he's sick. She is indubitably correct, but how sick and from what? Sergeant, I believe your prisoner is ill. There's no doubt about it, Mr. Holmes. Mentally defunct, I'd say. Criminally insane. No telling what he'll get up to on the loose. I think not. He's an epileptic. Dr. Watson will support my observation. Well, I'm loath to contradict you, Mr. Holmes. But you'll say so, just don't cut it in this instance. The bloke's loopy. Sergeant, are you familiar with the Encyclopedia Britannica? The greatest collection of book learning on earth, my dear pal, we said. That's as may be. I believe its articles on medicine are considered authoritative. Next to God, they're all the truth there is, sir. Pa said so. If you'd like to save the inspector's reputation from careening downhill and protect the yard from litigation for unlawful arrest, you should know of the latest research on epilepsy. Pay special attention to the sections on Grand Mall and psychomotor seizures. That man is sick. Jensen, the man in the lockup may be epileptic. Look up Grand Mall seizures in the EB and convey your findings to Inspector Lestrade. Right away, Sard.
God! Have the incarcerated gentleman cleaned up immediately and release him to his sister's custody. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Another scandal here would be damaging. You're finally ready to resume your duties, Lestrade? I appreciate your assistance on that medical matter, Mr. Holmes, but the arch tone is out of order. What can I do for you? Evidently nothing, even though there is more to the Diogenes disaster than the pathetic official examination has divulged. Sergeant, might I speak to Lestrade, please? Of course. Inspector, Mr. Holmes to see you. Mr. Holmes, Doctor. If you won't investigate the explosion further, you might at least assist me. How? Give me carte blanche at the explosion site and the morgue. Something sinister is going on, Lestrade, if only you had the wit to see it. I will ignore the insult in deference to your fragile emotional state. If you want to waste your time, I won't stop you. But you'll excuse me if I don't squander my department's resources to gratify your overdeveloped and theoretic suspicions. Without well-founded supposition, Lestrade, reason staggers and the mind dies. You might remember that. How's the family, Sergeant? Down with the grip, Mr. Holmes. Terrible cramps. I'm far from tip-top myself. Sorry to hear it. Might I speak with Inspector Gregson? Of course. And might I say, sir, how sorry I am about your brother. It's out of human hands, isn't it? Terrible business, these gas explosions. Yes, thank you, Sergeant. I'll just pop over to Gregson. Mr. Holmes, Doctor, what can I do for you? Has there been any news concerning the fire at the Diogenes? The Brigade confirmed our suspicions, sir. A spark of unknown origin ignited a gas main. The explosion was a regrettable accident. What is regrettable, Inspector, is that the Brigade doesn't possess the brain power to perform simple logic. As long as the cause of the spark remains unknown, the ultimate cause of the fire cannot be otherwise. Do you credit the rumor that Irish hooligans are abroad in the city? If you're suggesting that terrorists are behind the Diogenes explosion, Mr. Holmes, I can't encourage you. What if there were evidence of a bomb having been ignited? 
If you have such evidence, I want to see it. I'd want to know where it was found and why it was not turned over to the office. But I believe there is no such evidence. The Diogenes is not their sort of target. Tell that to my brother. I think that's enough, Holmes. Does Lestrade have anything to add to the Brigade's report? Doubtful. He has several cases running and was eager to close the book on this one. Typical. Always the easy way. Well, he's not as acute as he was, and compassion is not a strong point, but our workload is quite overwhelming. If the man is overworked, let him say so. Platitudes merely mask incompetence and lack of imagination, the callous numbskull. Holmes, please, moderate your tone. Well spoken, Mr. Holmes, if you'll permit me to say so. Will you provide some police protection for my brother? Don't push, Mr. Holmes. We've had a mutually advantageous relationship over the years. I'd hate to... Thank you, Inspector. Shall we leave, Holmes? Which is more bother, Lestrade being in or being out? It's a fair question. Seems I'm the only one round here working all hours. Go in if you like. Hoggy, heard anything that might interest me? Nothing, Mr. Holmes. You know I'd try to flog it if I did. You'll note I'm authorized to investigate matters relating to the Diogenes explosion. It's nothing to me. The inspector has no standing among my charges, the quick or the dead. In any case, this is a solicitation for cooperation, not an order. I ask again, in a civil manner, for permission to see my brother. I am his only relation. I cannot allow sympathy to shift to my judgment. Mr. Holmes will not expire any time soon. There's no need to disturb him and transgress hospital regulations.
That tears it, Watson. It's war. <coughs> I trust you have no objection if we visit the coroner. You trust in vain. Dr. Watson has recently pestered him. I can't think of any reason why you should do the same. Confine your movement to this hall, or you'll be forcibly removed. Confine yourselves to this hall, or you'll be forcibly removed. You'll note I'm authorized to investigate matters relating to the Diogenes explosion. It's nothing to me. The inspector has no standing among my charges, the quick or the dead. In any case, this is a solicitation for cooperation, not an order. <laughs> the inspector's request, the yard, CID and all. Respect for authority is the cornerstone of civilization. Must maintain discipline. Would have preferred a personal appeal. Indeed, I'll tell him you felt slighted. He's sure to be mortified. Did you happen to spy any suspicious persons lurking about earlier? I tolerate no loitering on my watch, Mr. Holmes. Members don't like it. If I so much as sniff a tradesman, I move them along sharpish. Let's not tarry, Forbes. We'll go in now. I warn you that it's dark and nasty inside. That suits my mood down to the ground. And I remind you, touch nothing. Watson, where did we find Mycroft exactly? It was just here, Holmes, beneath his portrait. You swept him up in your arms as if he were a child. Your strength amazed me. Adrenaline, Doctor. Danger animates and strengthens as often as it paralyzes.
I've asked you not to touch club property. Put that back, if you please. Forbes, my brother's snuffbox is not included in your purview. Do not make yourself an unbearable nuisance. Has anyone worked on the gas lines in the last day or so? Checked and bled by Midlands last week. All in perfect order. Like Inspector Lestrade says, gas accidents are the price of progress. Depend on Lestrade for a cliché in lieu of exercising his brain. The Lectio Facilior is fine for paleography, but it won't do for logic. The man's reasoning powers are abysmal. Do you remark anything odd about the entry, Forbes? Well, it's burned and soaked with water, isn't it? I mean, anything unexpected? No, the place is a mess. I'll have to clean it up. Mycroft never travels far without his snuff box. He must have fallen from his pocket when he was struck down. Unlikely. His other personal effects were undisturbed by the explosion. What is your hypothesis? Any speculation would be less than idle. I imagine it was blown in from somewhere. The lid might tell a story. I'll keep the box as a memento. Impressions, Doctor? Hmm, it is difficult to be very observant in such conditions. I am surprised by the uneven nature of the damage. With a few structural exceptions, the easily flammable object suffered most. Very astute, Watson.
Touch nothing, Mr. Holmes. I'll have to charge your brother an assessment. Did Sir Hubert expire in his chair? The old gentleman was lucky. Never knew what hit him. Lucky? Is there any predicate to murder victim more inapt than lucky? You can't prosecute the gas board for an accident. Spare me your opinion, Forbes. He was murdered as surely as if he took a bullet to the brain. Have Sir Hubert's people been notified, Forbes? He had no family, Mr. Holmes. Outlived them all. The Diogenes was kith and kin to him these many years. Good tipper he was. I'll miss him. Your sentiment is touching. Forbes, the lounge appears wrapped in morning bombazine. It hardly matters. There's nothing to see. You'll excuse me if I should come to a different conclusion? Suit yourself. Remember, touch nothing. Club rules must be enforced, even in... Please don't put yourself out. We can get on by ourselves. You may think so. It's my job to monitor the activities of strangers. Are you guarding the perimeter, Forbes? This seems the best vantage point, Mr. Holmes. Considering the upper story could collapse at any moment and crash down on our heads. What? Oh, right, yes. Out of harm's way. Very unstable. Another reason to touch nothing. I don't suppose you have a bullseye lantern, Forbes. As it happens, I do not. I'm not surprised. Fortunately, we are not dependent on your effects. Watson, what do your feline orbs espy? Hmm. Outlines, Holmes. No real details. The smoke plays tricks with the light. <laughs> 